and welcome back to more Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. So last time, we cleared stages 3 and 4. So this time we're starting with stage 5, Thunder the Night. This stage is actually pretty cool. First of all, it's kind of reminiscent of Ritual of the Night's opening uh, on a pirate ship with a bunch of very familiar looking enemies. Um, the music is also probably one of my favorite level themes in the game. Um, and it's just a pretty fun stage. It's also the last, like, what I would consider kind of easy stage, because from here on out the game starts to get very difficult, uh, very quickly. Uh, so might as well savor this slightly easier um, experience while it lasts. While this is one of the easier Castlevania-style games, that doesn't make it an easy game. Uh, by any means. So over here to the right, there is a passageway on this upper level. We were actually skipping it because the only thing over there is like a one-up. It's not a shortcut, so I'd rather save uh, uh, Jeeble's flight energy for uh, an actual shortcut or a power-up. So we have uh, a rainy uh, outside of the ship area. Again, very reminiscent of Ritual. Um, I'm a big fan of this uh, aesthetic. I'm not sure how well it'll, how good it'll look in the recording. Um, it might be a little rough on the bit rate, but we'll see. Uh, this enemy also I remember from uh, Ritual. I haven't played enough of that game to judge it, but I have played enough to recognize similarities at least to this level. And here we have a throwback to Rondo of Blood, actually, uh, because I'm pretty sure the ship level in that game actually had a an evil painting mini boss as well. Um, obviously, don't let it uh, use that attack. I assume it's an instant kill if Rondo is anything to go by, uh, but I'm not sure on that. But yeah, Ritual of the Night from what I've played seems fun. It's kind of difficult though. I've been having a lot of trouble with uh, certain areas. I think I've probably gone to levels a bit too early. Um, this is why I want to save um, some weapon uh, points, because I could just fly through there, or just uh, freeze that and then um, quickly get across. Overall, this level is also home to one of the best uh, weapons for Alfred, uh, so we actually really need to be careful about using up too much weapon energy, um, because if we can get to the final boss of this stage with like full uh, weapon points, we'll be able to shred through this fight no problem. Um, Jeeble will always get a magic drop, interestingly, because he has no um, sub-weapon, therefore no sub-weapon can actually drop for him. So in normal mode, that is your last uh, heart upgrade. So we are at full health with all characters for this mode. There is another heart uh, in the first stage, but you can only get that in a later playthrough. Um, we can fly up here to skip most of this actually, and head straight up to the second to last room. So that lantern is green, uh, which is very different than any we've seen up until now, uh, because it has a very special item. That was way too close. I thought I was gonna get hit by that. Um, this is Alfred's best sub-weapon, uh, which will come in handy right now, actually, because we are at the boss. First, I want to collect a little bit more uh, weapon points uh, to be on the safe side, and that's not max, but it should be good enough. This is Andrealfus, if I'm saying that right. Um, one of the tougher bosses, I find, just to hit them, unless you have uh, Alfred's spell. You can slide under this wind tunnel like that and get some damage with Miriam, like so. Uh, but when the boss is kind of stationary, you want to use the lightning power um, to clock as much damage as quickly as possible. Uh, it does a different attack, on that side, you have to jump over. I failed to do so, but that's that's the boss. Um, so the boss will charge in from the right side, so we have to jump over, and then like so, 
and then there'll be lightning on the right, and then we have to kind of hug that side of the lightning and be careful not to let the wind push us into the lightning. And with that, we got an extra life. Stage 6, Tragedy of Slaughter. Um, now this is when the game starts to get really rough. Um, in fact, I have been trying to record this video for a while now, uh, because I can get through stage 5 no problem, uh, stage 6 and uh, 7, uh, not so much. So let's see how this goes. Um, I've been really trying to get a good run of both stages and it hasn't happened so far, so we'll have to see how this goes. Um, down here is a gauntlet that permanently increases our attack power, and we can fly up here with G-Bowl to skip a bit of the level. I should have picked up the heart with Zangetsu, huh? Um, I've been really bad about <laughs> keeping track of our inventory, to be honest. Uh, I do like the idea of each character having a different health pool. I think that's really clever, uh, and introduces a level of strategy um, that I really like. Um, it kind of rewards different playstyles because you can either- it's its almost like an adaptive difficulty setting because you can either make the game easier for yourself or tougher depending on how much you collect basically. Again, same with even the sub-weapons. We don't need to use the lightning power at all. It's not required for anything. Does it help? Uh, yes, immensely. Is it needed? Not really. Um, that was too close, I almost slid off the edge. I don't trust my uh, luck here, so I'm gonna just fly and be safe. Um, so we have this buzzsaw here, uh, and enemies on the ceiling, so g is our best bet because he will be able to deal with some of the enemies that are jumping towards us, or not. Never mind, I'm flying. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't die. I pushed X barely in time to survive. I was like, wait a minute, what happened? I feel like you can freeze this if you have ice. I don't think it's worth it. Um, so we have these scissor enemies. Uh, this isn't a clock tower, um, but I guess close enough. Um, I've actually never played Clock Tower. Um, it's an old Super Famicom or Super Nintendo in Japan game. Uh, that's like a, I think it's like a point and click horror game. I've never played it. I am very familiar with it because I've heard a bunch about it. They made several sequels as well. Um, but the main enemy in that game carries a giant pair of scissors, so these enemies here are having giant pairs of scissors, that just makes me think of that. Um, so the little coffins above are shaking to indicate which ones are gonna fall, and also which ones have enemies in them. Um, so we have, we have to be a little careful here, uh, like so. Kind of bait them to drop. Oh wow, okay, that was a case of the knockback actually helping us. Um, sometimes it does happen. Um, so far, so good. Uh, this is definitely a rough level, uh, and it's not going to get any easier because we have these little enemies here uh, that are actually kind of difficult to deal with. Um, basically, get them to jump at you and then attack them before they can get another uh, round of attacks in. Or you can counter them, I guess. I actually didn't know that. Um, attacking them while they're attacking will cause them to stop. Uh, it's very good to know. Um, not taking any chances, I'm just gonna fly past this, uh, just for the sake of not worrying about this. Uh, is this the bad room? This might be the bad room. Um, I'm gonna do this, uh, just be very much on the safe side. This isn't the bad room, it's the next one. Uh, so this shortcut requires fire, uh, the fire shield with Alfred, but we don't have it, and I don't want to, uh, lose the lightning. Uh, specifically for this next boss. It's very helpful. Um, yeah, this is one of the worst areas in the game, uh, because these enemies here will spawn infinitely, so you have to time this very carefully um, with both the buzzsaws and uh, the enemies spawning. Um, I mean, I've been getting so lucky with the bat transformation here. <laughs> um, basically, every time I'm, I'm about to fall into a pit, I just mash X and hope for the best. Um, so we have more of those little scissor enemies here, just gotta jump over them like so. Um, like so, and then they also chase after you, so you have to keep moving. Uh, now we are pretty much good to go. 
So these enemies will throw um, their little projectile at you. Uh, it'll indicate whether it's gonna throw high or low. Very Castlevania. Um, that was a low. Uh, who has the most health? I think it's actually Miriam, so I should probably be using her um, to at least deal with these enemies. And now we have our next boss, so you know the drill. We're gonna swap over with Alfred and see how this goes. This is bloodless. Uh, she attacks by either causing like blood to rain down that does damage. She can drop um, spikes on the floor. Yeah, she can basically yeah cause spikes to go across the floor like that. Um, but with Alfred, this fight is basically a joke. We're already done with it. Uh, but interestingly enough, I don't know how to deal with this desperation attack. I legitimately do not have any idea of how to dodge this. So um, again, desperation attacks can't kill you as far as I'm aware. Um, so I'll just take the hit and be done. Stage 7, the Filer of Taboos. This is my least favorite level in the game. Uh, it is the hardest level, and um, it's actually not a bad level, like it's designed relatively well. It's just so frustrating. Um, so we have these moving platforms. Try to imagine doing precise platforming with Castlevania controls, and then you see where the problem lies. Um, if you're playing through this casually, and you are having trouble, do not feel bad about swapping casual mode. This level is rough. Um, we will be using Jeeble a lot. By the way, here is our last power-up uh, on armor upgrade, so we take less damage. We have Cursed Books, Fairy Castlevania. Um, once again, I'm going to be collecting those as Jeeble whenever possible to get as much magic as we can because it will be vital for getting through here unscathed. And unscathed being a very relative term here. So we can actually kind of cheese this. Um, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use like fire or something, but we can actually just do that instead and fly up. Um, here's another refill of the lightning spell if you lost it in the previous levels. Uh, pretty nice. So, hey, how do you feel about Mega Man platforming with Castlevania physics? Uh, not... that doesn't sound fun? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, it isn't. Um, Yoku blocks, I'm pretty sure is what they're called normally. Uh, this is rough, and it gets worse. I definitely died a lot when trying to practice this level um, off screen, and this is the level that I was the most worried about for this playthrough. I was so concerned about how I was going to get through here in one piece. Answer, I, I'm still not sure how I'm going to get through in one piece, um, but we'll give it a shot. Oh look, we have conveyor belts now, because the platforming wasn't precarious enough as is. Um, Miriam's dagger is great. We also have these fairy enemies that are awful, by the way, um, because knockback. I think that's really the problem. Um, you know, different types of platformers have different types of um, requirements to make them feel fair, and basically Castlevania controls and Mega Man style platforming don't exactly go hand in hand, and I think that's really my big issue with this level. It's just they're just kind of incongruous styles uh, that are trying to be forced into each other, um, and it's not great. So here we have this little, I guess it's like a little lion with wings. I guess it's like a griffin then. Um, not too difficult to take down. We only have three rep weapon points. I am worried about that. Um, because we haven't even seen the worst part of the stage yet. So we have another cursed painting. Actually, Jeeple might be good for the first 
uh, pass, and then just as it's about to uh, charge up, swap over to Miriam. I usually use Miriam for this attack because it has, uh, she has the best range. Um, but yeah, actually using both is probably the best way to go about that. Um, this is also a really good song, by the way. Again, even though I don't think this is as iconic, obviously, because the game is too recent to know if it's iconic or not, um, it's still a pretty solid uh, soundtrack. We just got an extra life, I guess we got enough points for it. We hit 100,000, so that makes sense. Um, and welcome to a really obnoxious room. Um, we have to constantly jump back and forth, hope the fairies don't knock us off the platform. Uh, that was surprisingly smooth. I'm amazed I got through that as fast as I did. Um, this room is interesting because I think you actually need, need two specific powers to get through here. I think you need the axe for Miriam to break that down, but you also need Alfred to freeze the griffin enemy um, to even get through here. So we don't have much in the way of um, protection from knockback here because uh, we just have a lot of narrow platforms uh, here, so we have to be very careful. I swapped over to G-Bull because that, that's exactly why. Um, so I have a little bit of a buffer so I can fly. We still have 25 weapon points, uh, which is perfect. Uh, I'm really glad about that. Um, because it's not over yet. We still have one more, in my opinion, awful room to get through. Um, the worst room probably in the game, in my opinion, is coming up pretty soon. Um, I'm pretty sure this right here is the checkpoint, uh, so it's... It's at least generous in that way, but this is... rough. We have, uh, we have more of these little disappearing blocks, we have this little chest spider here being really obnoxious. Um, so if you have g pole still at this point, Definitely fly over everything. Do not try to get through there normally because it is a headache to do so. Um, so we're just gonna skip this enemy here, climb up, and this should actually be close to the boss. That was surprisingly smooth, actually. Um, I had enough weapon points to just breeze through most of this, which was super lucky. Um, trying to do that legit is a nightmare, to be honest. We're not done yet, though. Um, a few more rooms to get through. Um, but we're almost there. Gotta time this carefully to jump over. And yeah, we're at the boss. Thankfully. Uh, so gonna swap over to Alfred. This is Bathin. So... Uh, he can electrocute the floor, you have to stand on these blocks, and then jump to whichever one does not have a target on it. So yet again, Alfred is a boss killer. Um, also got out of the way of that, I failed to do so. Uh, Miriam's best for this attack because she has the best range, um, otherwise Alfred is great. I ran out of weapon energy though. The boss should be almost done though, it's... Bathin is like really easy actually. Um, like this fight isn't really that much to worry about, unless I lose sight of where I am and almost die in the process. There we go. Desperation attack is to stand on this block and then jump down or jump away before he hits the center like that. Stage 8, Curse the Moon. But that's gonna do it for now, so next time we're gonna see what awaits us in Stage 8. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon.